This is Diaspora Digital Media. I am Lydia Odwada. It's DDM's update. A legal victory for Donald Trump. Recall that in recent times, Donald Trump has been in and out of court. However, there's been some sort of light for Donald Trump as the Supreme Court has ruled that he can stay on the ballot. Recall that the former United States president has been in and out of court over insurrection charges, which would have kept him off the ballot. However, he got fortunate and the ruling went in his favor. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled unanimously that states cannot bar Donald Trump from running for another term. Rejecting the challenge from Colorado that threatened to remove the former president from the ballots around the nation. The decision, while not a surprise, is the most important ruling concerning a presidential election since George W. Bush prevailed in Bush v. Gore in 2000. The case was based on a constitutional provision, Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, that prohibits insurrectionists from holding office. All the justices' opinion focused on legal issues without taking a position on whether Trump had committed insurrection. All nine justices said that states could not bar candidates from the presidency based on the provision while five consecutive judges ruled that Congress must act to give Section 3 force. Here are the highlights from the ruling. I was very honored by a 9 to nothing vote and a quote, Trump said in an interview on a conservative radio show. The question now is, what next? The decision comes during a pivotal week for the presidential race. It was a super Tuesday as many states held their presidential primaries. And on Thursday, President Biden Bush is scheduled to deliver the State of the Union address. In the coming months, the Supreme Court may rule on a host of other legal issues related to Donald Trump. The warehouse looting, not just hunger, police. Recall that on the 3rd of March 2024, a government warehouse in Guava Axis of Abuja got emptied by some Nigerians in the federal capital territory. The looting of a government warehouse in the FCT was attributed to the current hardship in the country and then ascribed to hoodlums. Now, the authorities say the incident was not simply the re result of hunger, but criminal. The police said, in quotes, not only the food items that are here, including the roofing, windows, and even the gates of this place and offices were all attacked. You can see the level of damage, end of quote. Dear Nigerians, please join your mouth in this matter. Do you say it was hunger or there was more? This is a point where we say those in support of the police statement say yes, and those against the name. Please bounce POS from stations. This kind of sounds awkward, or is it just me? Anyway, the Inspector General of Police, Kayode Ebetokun, has ordered stoppage of point of sales POS machines and other electronic mobile money transaction devices within police stations and other police facilities nationwide. Inside this Nigeria of ours, is it possible? Will the men not find another way to get money? Well, we don't know until the system is sanitized to the glare of all. The ban is coming after a public outcry on alleged illegal and illicit transactions of POS machine operators within certain police operatives. The cleansing of the police force is in motion. Let's watch and see how this evolves. APC's condition for truce with Alia. The stakeholders of the APC in Benue have vowed not to support Governor Hainsett's alia unless he recognizes the secretary to the government of the Federation, Senator George Akume, as the leader of the party in the state. The Detroit had reported the internal crisis rocking the APC in Benue as mainly a struggle for control of the party structure in the state between Governor Alia and the SGA, whose foot soldiers have been at each other's throats. 
Rumor and Vision here at Akaridolu from the Park. Betty Anyamu Akaridolu, wife of the late governor of Ondo State, Rotini Akaridolu, has tackled her late husband's niece, Funke Akaridolu Aruga, for supporting the governorship aspirant of incumbent governor of Loki, Aita Tiwa. Daily Trust reports that Akaridolu Aruna, who served as former deputy chief of protocol in the administration of late governor Akaridolu, has thrown her weight behind Aita Tiwa. That's it on DDM's update. I am Lydia Odoada. Thanks for staying tuned.